Now then, how's it going? I thought it was about time that I made a review about the ZWO 533MC Pro cooled one-shot colour camera. That's a real mouthful to say. I've had this camera for about six months now, so I thought it was about time that I made a video about my likes, my dislikes, show you some example images that I've taken using this camera, and also compare it to the 183 and 294, which are similar ZWO cameras around this range. So a really brief rundown of the specs of this camera. I won't labor on this too much because you can go and read this for yourself. It is a nine megapixel, one inch square sensor. We'll get back to the square part in a few minutes. It has 3.76 microns per pixel, which is bigger than the 183, but smaller than the 294. And again, we'll get onto that a little bit later. It has a 3008 by 3008 resolution, and it can cool down to minus 35 degrees C. Although I've generally been using it at around minus 10, minus 15, depending on how warm or cold it is outside at night. So before I go into what I like and dislike about this camera, I thought it was worth having a brief look at what comes in the box when the camera arrives. So when you first open the box, obviously you get the camera, but you also get this nice padded case that comes included. And I like to leave my gear set up even when I'm not imaging. I have a very forgiving wife who allows me to take up a load of space in the house with my setup fully assembled at all times, which is great. Um, and so I like to just uh, stick the case on the end of the camera just to stop any dust getting into the fan and having to clean that out. It comes with all of the adapters that you'll need to be able to get the correct backspacing, about 55 mil, to be able to achieve focus with the telescope. So I really like that. Lots of different size adapters with different thread sizes, M42, M48. So it should work for most setups. And you also get the USB 3 cable to plug it into a laptop or a ZWO ASI Air, for example, or a Raspberry Pi, which is what I use, which is mostly the same as a ZWO ASI Air anyway. Now, one of the biggest things that I like about this camera, and I think is a large selling point, certainly against the 183 and the 294, is that it's advertised as having zero amp glow. And you can see this on the ZWO website. It shows example images of the 533 with zero amp glow and other cameras that produce amp glow. These have been taken as dark frames. Now for me, the zero amp glow was a selling point, but it isn't a showstopper because using dark frames, you can calibrate out amp glow anyway. So the 183 and 294 might have amp glow. However, they can be calibrated out using dark frames anyway. So for me, it's nice not to have that amp glow, but it's not a showstopper. It's my first ever cooled dedicated astronomy camera that I've used and I really like how clean all of the light subs look straight out of the camera and if I do a side-by-side -side comparison with my DSLR then you can see that the amount of noise that a DSLR sensor can add to your light frames is quite ridiculous really uh, especially on those warm summer evenings that sensor's really cooking and so Having a cooled camera, obviously you don't have that problem because you can cool it to the same temperature each time and therefore the amount of noise that you're adding is always going to be less in your light frames. You still do need to take dark frames, of course, for calibration, but I just like that the images themselves come cleaner out of the camera. And I've already talked about the fact that it comes with all of the adapters to enable you to achieve back focus and actually ZWO have a great web page which I will link in the description down below which will take you to various ways of setting up a camera with the correct back focus for your telescope. So whether you are using an autofocuser or a filter draw like I am or a filter wheel if you're using a mono camera, it goes through various different ways of setting up a ZWO camera for the correct back spacing, which I think is a huge positive because that certainly helped me out when I was trying to do it myself. And I think the addition of a padded case is nice. Uh, like I say, I, I stick it on the end of my uh, set up so that my camera is always protected from dust but if you're dismantling your setup regularly then actually it's going to protect your camera and uh, keep it nice nice and shiny I like it to look shiny um, and so I, I think that's um, quite a nice feature as well and now on to my dislikes and yes there are some this isn't a 100% positive review for 900 pounds I think a power supply should be included and I can't believe that it isn't and I don't think 
in my opinion, it's not particularly well advertised that it's not included. I did know, having done a lot of research around which camera to buy, I'd learned that a power supply wasn't included. But I think if I just had in mind that the 533 was what I wanted to buy and I'd bought it, I would have been quite surprised to see that the power supply wasn't included. Of course, you can buy your own for 25 quid um, from places like First Light Optics, and I can link the ZWO one down in the description below if that's of interest. Um, I happen to have one lying around at home, uh, which was the correct type, so I didn't need to buy one, but I think it's a bit tight when you're spending that amount of money on a camera to not include a power supply. I could make some excuses for them. They ship these things worldwide, but that doesn't stop most companies still sending you a power supply regardless of where you are in the world. Um, two, they're not the only company that do this. So I, I, I've seen this in, in other things that I've purchased online as well, where a power supply isn't included or you get a power supply for a country that you don't live in and then you end up with a sort of UK adapter to attach onto the front of that. I just don't like that. Or maybe, a bit more cynically, ZWO assume that everybody using a ZWO camera is using a ZWO ASI Air where you can plug it in directly to the ASI Air and it will provide the power in order to be able to use the camera for imaging. I don't know. I'll leave that one up to you. And the other thing isn't necessarily something that I dislike, but I think it is something that might put a few people off. And it's the square sensor. Square images aren't for everybody, I think is fair to say. I think if you are on the fence about whether to get the 183, 533 or 294, if square images are going to put you off, then don't get the 533. Now, the square images haven't put me off, obviously, from buying the camera, because I bought it, I've got it, I love it. But I think it is a problem for some people. Um, the only time I really find a problem is, to be honest, when I'm trying to share the images in a YouTube video. Um, fitting a square image into a 1920 by 1080 frame is very difficult. You have to lose some of your image. And so you can obviously crop your image down to size, but if you've got a target, for example, this shot that I've got of the North American Nebula, I can't crop that down to a sort of 1080p resolution for a video without significantly cropping out a large part of the nebula. And therefore I lose a load of detail in my opinion, which makes the image much better. So. That is a concern for people, I think. It was a bit of a concern for me. I don't particularly mind that it's a square sensor. I knew it was a square sensor when I was buying it. And if it had been a deal breaker for me, I would have gone and spent the slightly extra money and bought the 294 instead. But I think it's just something to be aware of. So a brief look at how the 533 compares with the 183 and the 294. The 183 is a different sensor it has a different read noise and a different resolution. And the 533 is more sensitive in its light gathering capabilities. So it does cost about a hundred pounds ish more. Um, so if your budget is constrained, then maybe the 183 is the one to go for. I follow a number of people on Twitter and Instagram that use the 183 and they produce phenomenal images. And you wouldn't know that they were using 183 unless they outright stated it in their description. Um, for me, the 533 was worth the extra. It's bigger pixel size, it's more sensitive to gathering light, and it didn't have the amp glow. So I, I, I think for me, those were the, the, the bigger factors in why I went for this camera over the 183. And the 294 has a crop size sensor, so something that would be more akin to what everybody's used to if you're coming into buying your first astronomy camera like I was from a DSLR. But with the 294, like I've already talked about, and the 183, you're gonna introduce amp glow into your images, but that can be calibrated out with dark frames. So I think when looking at the 294 versus the 533, I don't think it's necessarily a question of, um, do I want amp glow or no amp glow? I think it's a question of, do I want square images or not? And if the answer is, I don't mind about having square images, 
then I think the 533 is the better camera to go for. If square images are a real deal, deal breaker for you, then I would go with the 294. Again, you have to bear in mind that the 294 is about 80 pounds more expensive than the 533. So when you're looking at the 294 compared to the 183, you're looking at about a 200 pound difference. And 200 pound would buy you a very nice filter, maybe even two filters for your 183 camera and you might end up with a slightly better setup more quickly if you went for the cheaper camera where you'll still be able to produce exceptional images and it will be a camera that you love. So which one would I go for? Do I have any regrets in buying the 533? No, I did a lot of research before I bought the 533. I am over the moon that I chose this camera but perfectly honest I'd be quite happy with either the 183 or the 294 as well I don't think there's a huge amount in it for me the 533 is the better option but for you that choice may be different and if it is different let me know in the comments down below which camera would you choose and why and if you're new in astrophotography and want to learn about some of the mistakes that beginners tend to make when they're first starting out in this hobby go ahead and click into this video right here where i talk about that otherwise i'll see you in the next one